really shouldn't be hitchhiking out there. Oh, no? Just watch me, baby. Yeah, but it's a little dangerous. You saw the riffraff that just blew by. You know what? It's not as dangerous as my missing my first day of surgical rotation. If I'm late, I'm dead. Eve, come on, just wait in the car. Why, you think you're going to fix this stupid thing? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to fix it. Well, then hurry up. It's 100 degrees out here, and I'm not stepping foot in that car until the air conditioning's running. Well, it might be running a little quicker if you were to help me out instead of standing out here showing off your shapely figure to every pickup truck that goes by. Well, I am just using my assets the best way I know how. Well, I think your assets would be better used in there. I'm a doctor, not a mechanic. Dr. Evelyn Lambert. What a pity. Just when Evelyn was trying so hard to pull her act together. Yeah, do you always have to be such a jerk? Come on, lighten up, Marshak. Dr. Joseph Scanlon. Here. So how do we start proving that Cooper caused his own seizure? What do you mean, we? You just told me that you appreciated my support. I also told you to concentrate on your own career and not mine. Yeah, right. When are you going to... You said you want to be a surgeon. When are you going to get yourself a lawyer? Dr. Matthew Harmon. Oh, I'll be right back. Right here. President, sir. Dr. Dr. Julie Morris. Dr. Ralph That's two out of seven missing. We start walk rounds in a half hour. If Morris and Lambert aren't back by then, they're going to find themselves on my list. None of you want that. I can assure you. Where are they? I don't know. I'm worried, Joe. Look, Frank went out to look for him. Uh, I'm sure everything's under control. Mm. Oh. Julie. Mm. Can't do this. We can't. Not now. I'm gonna turn you into a doctor. Let's go over this one more time. Mrs. Steinman, room 1030, mid-30s, good health, admitted for an emergency appendectomy. What did you do, memorize the charts? <sighs> Just a couple. She started running a high fever, developed a red blotchy skin rash. Now tell me, Dr. Devlin, what are you going to do? I'll think about it later. My head's killing me right now. Is that what Bennett Devlin says when he's in the OR cracking somebody's chest? Oh. I'd check for peritonitis and change your antibiotic, okay? Excellent. Could you help me with this, please? New patient, Jimmy Bruce. 12 years old. Renal transplant. Admitted post-op, high fever. Anything else? Dizziness. Oh, Frank. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, dizziness. High fever. Sounds like rejection. Oh, he's rejecting the kidney. I wish we didn't have to talk about sick people right now. You're going to be fine. It doesn't matter how much stuff I know. I'm still going to get in trouble for being so late. Frank? Yeah? I'm going to be sick. Are you holding that choke cable like I told you to do? Don't talk to me like that. If I can insert a Foley catheter, I can certainly hold on to this damn cable. Well, it should be starting. Something's wrong here. Don't blame me. Well, just... Push it in a little harder. Yes, doctor. Yes. We'll be at the hospital in Woo! no time. Hey. You owe me 50 bucks. You're a genius. Take a check. What? Uh, you might want to uh, fix yourself up a little bit. Why do I look that bad? Uh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I look like a grease monkey. Oh, I don't think anybody will notice. Oh, jeez. You, you know what? This isn't funny. No, it's not. <laughs> if it weren't for you, I'd be at the hospital right now. If it weren't for me, you'd be on the number 69 bus. I got the car started, didn't I? Listen, this internship means everything to me. And there's just something about the combination of you and me that spells doom for my career. Come on, I'll get you to the hospital. I'll take care of everything. How do I know the car won't break down again? 
Well, I don't know. You're just going to have to trust me. <laughs> I'm going to regret this. I know I will regret this. Well, Eve's still not here. Or Julie. When's Attila the surgeon coming back with his list? His name's Dr. Boardman. Uh, Board. Board man. How appropriate. He should be back any minute. Hope Frank can find Julie. Yeah, well, you should have thought about that last night when you were feeding her martinis. Hey, I was trying to stop her. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, you should be having this conversation with your brother. He's the reason Julie was drinking in the first place. I'm her friend. I'm glad I was there to give her a ride home. Just looking out for her. Right. You know, the only person I've ever seen you look out for is yourself. I'll cut it out, all right? Yeah, we want to listen to this. This is going to be tough enough as it is. Let's not make this day more difficult, all right? I don't know why I let that guy get to me. He makes me crazy. Well, just stay away from him, okay? You're right. I mean, I've been waiting for this day for most of my life. And here it is. So don't screw it up because of a guy like Chris Ramsey. I won't. I won't. Okay. So how are you? Oh, I'm uh, yeah, fine. Couldn't be better. Yeah, well, I'm glad you went to San Francisco. What do you mean? Well, things here are going to get pretty hairy, so it's good that you straighten things out at home. Yeah, right. So say you find yourself an attorney to deal with all that legal stuff. I mean, he'll be able to prove that Cooper caused his own seizure, don't you think? I don't think anyone could prove that. So, so that's it. You're just going to give up. I never said anything about giving up. I got a question for you. Say a patient is admitted. He's got severe headaches, double vision, nausea, fatigue. Now, he might have a brain tumor. Or maybe he just needs new glasses. So what, are you going to wait for the results of the MRI before you give the guy a vision test? Of course not. I'd do both tests at the same time. Exactly. You're going to follow two courses of action simultaneously. Your point being? You go ahead and listen to Lee Baldwin. You get yourself the best lawyer in Port Charles. And while your hot shot's working on the case, we're going to be working on our own little theory. Since when did it become our theory? Oh. Well, well, it's really my theory. But I'm willing to let you in on it. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. I mean, I think the hospital would just love to be able to say that Greg Cooper did this to himself. I mean, you saw Lee Baldwin's face light up when I suggested it, right? I also heard him say that it would be difficult to prove. No. No, we can do this. We can. Even though we might not look a lot like Nick and Nora Charles, you know? Okay, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go learn how to be a surgeon. I'll talk to you later. Morris and Lambert still haven't shown. Now, where the hell are they? They'll be here. You can guarantee that? Yes, because it's important to them. And because I told them to be here. Are you questioning that? Perhaps this is uh, indelicate. But this isn't how David Falk would have run this show. We'll never know, will we? You really are hopeless. It's only the greatest opera of all time. David Falk, if you think I am sitting through some opera... If I'm named chief resident, you are. Uh, 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 not until you agree. Oh, David, come on, those things are like four hours long. Burgess, we made a deal. Whoever was named chief resident would celebrate in the fashion he or she deemed most enjoyable. All in right. the company of the loser. All right. Don't worry, I'll buy you dinner first. Where? A vegetarian restaurant, I know. They do marvelous things with okra. Okra? Of course, now, if you're selected, we'll have to do some of the things that you most enjoy. Uh, suturing a forehead, perhaps, or uh, barking at orderlies. Hey. You need to get out more, Burgess. You pushed me into this. Just like you pushed me into applying to be chief resident. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I don't have a chance. You know you have that job locked up. You give up too easily. Why, why did you think I should go for this? Well, because you want it, for one thing. And because I enjoy competition. 
real competition. And the other applicants were, well, uh, you know, disappointing. You see me as real competition? Don't be coy. It doesn't suit you. You know you're the finest resident in emergency medicine who ever came through the program. And all the times that we've been friends, that's the first compliment you've ever given me. And I shouldn't have given you that one. You should know how good you are, and you should fight for every opportunity that's available to you. Give me that letter. I can't take the suspense any longer. Not until you say what we're doing, if you're selected. Bowley. You said to fight for what I want. Bowling. That's right. Followed, no doubt, by patty melts and beer. Followed by pasta in a good restaurant with white tablecloths and no okra. <laughs> what will it be? Turando or the Lings? So, how am I supposed to dress for the opera? Ellen. You know what I think? What? Next year's interns, their lives will be hell. But by the end of that year, they will be on their way to being the best. Because you are the best. And because you won't settle for anything less. You push them the way you pushed me. Oh, congratulations, friend. Don't let this derail you. Don't let anything derail you. I won't. How's the toast going? Don't ask. You want some coffee, seltzer? Why are you being so nice to me? Well, that's complicated. Mm -hmm. For now, let's say it's because I believe in you. I think you're going to be a wonderful surgeon, even better than your old man. It's hard to see that this morning. You ready? We are never going to get there on time. Uh, Want to bet? He wouldn't. He did. You look like hell. You look fine. Oh, don't lie to me. You do. Come on, trust me. <laughs> There's that word again. Quiet. Let me tell you something. I got a lot of friends at the hospital. And even my enemies owe me favors. Well, what category does Dr. Mark Boardman fall into? Who's he? He's the chief surgical resident. He's arrogant, he's a sadist, and he doesn't think women have any business being surgeons. Okay, let's try this again. For the last time today. Dr. Evelyn Lambert. Present. Well, well, well. Good morning, Dr. Lambert. Nice of you to crawl out of bed and drag yourself to the hospital. We're grateful to have you with us. It wasn't my fault. The car broke down Save and Save the I... excuse. Okay? Yes, doctor. Hey, listen, don't blame her. I'm responsible. And who the hell are you? Scott Baldwin. Any relation to Lee Baldwin? Huh. Yeah. Huh. Mark Boardman. So, uh, how'd you get stuck chauffeuring an intern to the hospital? I like driving pretty girls to work. So, has Dr. Julie Morris managed to join us? Here. Okay. First rule. After today, lateness will not be tolerated for any reason. Now, I don't care what you got away with in the ER. It's going to be different with me. <laughs> 